and welcome to jasonnewland.com and please only listen to this recording when you can safely close your eyes because this let me bore you to sleep session may cause you to feel tired and perhaps wanting to fall asleep and also if you're watching this on YouTube also please only watch this video when you can safely close your eyes as this may cause drowsiness so that's that big long introduction to this let me bore you to sleep number 100 I think it's 104 I think it is um yeah I did actually last night about what time is it about half nine I or maybe it was about 20 22 minutes past nine something like that and I started a live broadcast on Facebook a live video stream on Facebook and I called that Let Me Bore You To Sleep 104 live on Facebook and my intention for that was that it was going to be uh, you know, a let me bore you to sleep, and I was gonna convert the video to audio and upload it to the podcasts. However, it wasn't a let me bore you to sleep, it was just, it was something different and. I just decided to stop the recording after about I think I, I think I was there to about 39 minutes and I deleted the video afterwards because it wasn't anything I know these you could say aren't anything but they're purposely that way they're designed in a specific way to tune into that boredom limit that we all have within us where you just you cross the line and you just want to close your eyes and no part of you thinks that anything interesting is going to arise at any moment and you know you can still continue to listen with your eyes closed but you might just decide to fall asleep because that's better than listening to me going on and on. Now, with the video yesterday, the live stream, it just turned into me reading out comments that were being left on Facebook which is 
something that I did invite people to do and then it just seemed a bit pointless it's not something that I enjoy doing or maybe it's something that I need to be in a certain mood to do. That's probably more realistic. So I have done some live streams where I've had some fun. And there was one a, a while back, not that long ago, but it was just me and some people on Facebook. And we, I was singing a few songs and I was just acting a bit silly and that was quite fun I suppose I quite like it when things are light hearted and just gentle that's kind of where I prefer to be these days <laughs> maybe I'm just getting old but I'm not interested in conflict or uh, controversial stuff or trying to do doing something for shock value I used to do that a lot when I was younger I was I was a comedian and I used to do uh, very shocking jokes purposely to, to up, not upset people but to shock them and to make them laugh but you know that was 20 at the time well plus 7 years of doing it but when I started that was 1991 January I think you'll have to check your calendar for this but I think pretty much my first ever performance in an actual comedy club was I think it was January the 23rd and it was a Wednesday evening in 1991 so maybe you can google that date to see if it's real or not well, it's going to be a real date but I don't know if it was definitely a Wednesday but I've got that date in my head the 23rd unless it was the 16th but they weren't my first gigs because uh, I actually did a gig I entered into a competition so my very first stand up performance was for a competition for Sky um, as a, a you may not know who they are they're a, like a what are they a huge company actually now but they satellite television they do internet and at the time Sky was a joke people used to laugh at Sky because they had satellite dishes and uh, they couldn't even give away their services I used to work for them for a while and people didn't even want it for free but uh, now you know they're really really good and worth billions and billions and billions of dollars so back then this was just a really low budget television show uh, kind of on cable or satellite satellite channel so I remember going along to it because it was in where was it in I'm sure it might be it might have been in Croydon but it might not have been It was quite weird because I actually became friends with the person that won that contest. 
but I didn't meet him at the at the contest because I didn't even get through to the television uh, episodes. Uh, I I did some stand up, didn't know what I was doing, and then I went home, and I wasn't I wasn't allowed any further. But um, I got a couple of laughs, which was nice. I think the first one was when I said that I was a comedian. Got a laugh then. And then my second performance was earlier in the month in January 1991 because the the contest I did or entered for was in 1990. I think it was in the summer. Anyway, I went to this... I think this was a contest as well. This was a talent show in a pub. And... Yeah, I don't really recall much of it. Other than I didn't... I didn't win anything. might have even been the same week as the first proper gig I say proper gig but proper uh, stand the proper comedy club that I went to so I think the the first one in London that I went to in January 1991 was on a Monday some talent show Uh, And then I went to a place called the Comedy Cafe, which was, they had, so I didn't know it was a comedy club, because I found out the details of this talent contest, which what it was, in, it it was a paper called The Stage, and it was... I don't know if it was weekly or fortnightly or monthly, but it was basically specifically for actors and actresses and people in the business, you know, of performing or anything to do with stage, you know, performance, production, things like that. So I used to buy it and then look through the adverts. I think they were at the back. I think they were. Because I just got this memory because, you know, most papers that I ever really remember looking at the adverts, it's usually the adverts are at the back, aren't they? Like the... I know you get like full page adverts and uh, like half page adverts throughout the page, throughout the paper. Um, but the the listings or the uh, the free ads or the buy and sell kind of adverts, they're generally in my memory at the back or near the back. Because the right at the back is usually the sports section. So the the buying and selling or the... There's usually a collection of different things, isn't there? Uh, In a newspaper. For example... There'd be maybe... uh, Like a car section. The cars for sale maybe registration numbers for sale there'd perhaps be a section where people can sell uh, like white goods you know things like uh, kitchen appliances fridges freezers uh, uh not dustpan and brush what's it called you know you put your 
your dishes in dishwasher washing machine maybe uh, cooker but not all cookers are white though are they but not all washing machines are white either I've seen I've seen different coloured appliances it's a bit of prejudice really isn't it it's a bit prejudiced calling kitchen electrical equipment white goods when it's not all white but I'll be honest I don't care enough to make a Facebook page about it and to start you know starting a petition you know, contacting change.org and sending the petition around to all my Facebook friends and then you know just basically wasting my time with that I don't feel the need and other things you have in the paper what other things do you have they used to be and I'll be very careful the way I, I uh, introduce this they used to be personal services in the back of the paper but there doesn't seem to be anymore and in London when I was in London they even changed that to adult services so I think basically what it meant is personal and adult is it was personal and it was for adults so there wasn't anything kind of iffy about it because there's nothing iffy about being an adult is there it's just normal and there'd be all these uh, adverts for well be honest I didn't realise that there were so many people in East London where I was living at the time with the need for physical massage because I lived there for 12 years and considering the amount of masses, the, mass, the amount of massage services that were being offered East London should have been the most relaxed place the most mellow place ever people should have just been walking around completely relaxed all the muscles and tension gone So I don't know kind of what happened, but there's a lot of massages, uh, therapists, and services, and it wasn't just that. There was also saunas. And it's a very, it's a very healthy area, really, East London. The amount of saunas that were available, you go in there, and uh, I imagine go in and have a nice sauna and get rid of the toxins out of your skin and, you know as long as you drink plenty of water it'd be really really good for you to um, gain the health benefits from attending one of these saunas they were also very personal as well because they'd whoever set it up they'd actually they'd use their own name to make it a bit more friendly and a bit more approachable like Lulu's sauna Joanne's Joe's sauna or uh Kim, Kim's sauna. You 
Yeah, Kim saw that. I don't know who, what kind of person had that next to a Chinese takeaway. I went in there once by accident. Um, I was very embarrassed. I had to say sorry. Um, and the person behind the counter said, We don't offer massages here, this is a, this is a takeaway. So, oh, sorry. That's next door, sir. What other adverts did there used to be in the paper? I suppose it was things because in my memory I don't recall having the same kind of things as there are today. So first of all there was no internet at that time. Although the internet was around while I was in London, but it just wasn't around for the majority of the time. And even when it did come in and the internet was available, it would take about a week for a picture to, to like, you know, actually show itself on the screen. It would dial up. It was very slow. It was... Uh, Yeah, it wasn't. I did like the internet when I first met it. Because for me, it was about the knowledge. It's like, oh, I remember thinking that. Oh, you can start to learn new things and. I quite liked the news websites from other parts of the world. So you can kind of get to get to see what's going on around the world without relying on the uh, the spoon feeding that the the news channels here do. Because, you know, ultimately they decide what they want us to know, what what news they want to give us, and they don't have that ability as much now as they used to, because the internet lets everybody know exactly when something's going on in another part of the world that might be of interest to some people in the world. I don't get so fascinated by presidents. It seems to be a real... I wouldn't know this if it wasn't for Facebook. Andre's just jumped out of his bag. I think he's going to be awake. Oh, he's just done a really loud. Um, I won't go into it, but he's staring at me. That's it. Yeah, wipe it on the carpet. Yeah, it's a good boy. He's not going to want to go into the into his bag now. He's going to want to go outside for a walk. It's not quite time. He's going to have to wait a little while before we can do that. Oh, he's gone back into his bag. He must have heard me. I was tired earlier. I got up. And I made a 
let me no what was it a deep sleep whisper session so I recorded that then yeah I had my breakfast and then I thought what I'll do is I'll you know do the editing upload it share it you know all that stuff and I was struggling to keep my eyes open while I was doing that it was as if the session was being played to me but it wasn't can you hear that in the background there's some racing going on somewhere So what was I saying? Oh yeah, newspapers. Old oh, jobs. They used to have job sections, didn't they? And also accommodation. That's the two things that I used to use them for. Because when I was a younger man I used to go through jobs like I don't know socks made of rice paper I don't know, just they just got through them very quickly always looking for a new job and the local newspaper would have the local jobs So I remember, uh, I remember when I first moved to London, I bought the Evening Standard, which was a very, very famous paper in London. It's probably the most famous paper in London, really. It's been going for a long time. And they now give it away free. It used to cost money, now it's free. And for some reason, so I remember getting it and walking because I was staying with my aunt, or like a cousin, really, to be fair, she was my cousin, and Yeah, and I was looking to get a job, but also looking to find somewhere else, well, somewhere to live, because I was only staying there temporarily. So I remember buying the paper in a newsagent's opposite Maryland train station, and then... I might have bought a chocolate bar as well. I don't know. Not 100% on that because it's a very long time ago. I mean, I moved to London twice. The first time was 1989. Second time was 1991. And both times I kind of went through the same process except in 1991 I had a room to move into which I'd already sorted out previously but I didn't have a job at the time so I just remember that probably both those times I'd be get the Evening Standard plus the local papers as well walk across the traffic yeah there was it wasn't traffic lights but it was a zebra crossing 
onto this kind of like a roundabout area opposite Maryland train station and there's basically three different roads one road went up to Forest Lane one road went up to Leytonstone Leytonstone High Road or Leytonstone Road and the other one led to what is this the way towards Stratford train station I can't remember what that road was called it might have been called Maryland Road um, but it was kind of like this roundabout but not a roundabout like you'd expect there was actually stuff on it there's like seats and there may have even been toilets on there I don't recall but it might not be there now it might it might just be a roundabout with grass and flowers and the sign saying that this roundabout is sponsored by I don't know, the Gnome Society or I don't know it's VD clinics it, 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 different places don't they uh, sponsor roundabouts no one's ever asked me if I wanted to sponsor a roundabout it's never come up ever in conversation no one's ever said, you know, Tay Juicy. I said, yeah. You ever, ever fa fancy, uh, you know? No, you know what? You know. No. What, what are you getting at? Well, I just wonder if you fancy, uh, you know. No, I do not know. Did not know before. Do not know now. Please explain yourself succinctly. Yeah, I thought about sponsoring a roundabout. And when I heard that, it reminded me of the Elvis song Roustabout. And how you could just change the word to roundabout. It'd still be a really cool song. You know, I'm just a roundabout drifting from town to town. Yeah. I mean, it was a roundabout, but it wasn't really. And then the other side of the roundabout, if you walk straight across it, there is there was a place I used to go to which was a massage parlour but it wasn't a massage parlour not um, okay it wasn't a massage parlour it was a health spa and I didn't start going there until 19... Ninety eight, probably. Because before that, it was I think it was a snooker hall, and then they closed it and they they opened it up as a spa, like a health spa. But it was a naturist health spa, so everybody in there was naked, apart from me. So I made sure that I covered my bits up. M me jewellery, you know, me. Me ring and me other jewellery. Just, you know, I just made sure I covered myself up. 
but only downstairs. The rest um, was fine, or maybe I wore a dressing gown. But I wasn't there for that. I wasn't really there to to see the the men sitting down and laying down on the deck chairs, uh, just freely being free. I mean, I'm good luck to anyone that wants to just relax and let it all hang out. But I was there because I had a back problem and I wanted to have a massage. And basically what happened in, I think it was 1995, I reckon. I was, yeah, I was, there was this big building and I was doing a job and all we were doing was moving furniture into each room and it was for nurses, student nurses and it was snowy and it was icy, it was very cold and I picked up bit of furniture and I felt something in my back just rip and I was just stuck there for about 20 minutes couldn't move but eventually I just had to keep going and uh, had problems for, for years after that so I was trying to loosen it up and just make it feel a bit better which is why I went to the this uh, therapeutic massage place and it was just up the road from where I lived so it was handy and they also had a well I got shown around what they had, they had a sauna they had a what's that bath the bath with bubbles um Jacuzzi, that's it, jacuzzi. The thing is, when I went in there, I honestly did not know it was a naturist place. I didn't know. I had no idea. But I did, because it was very open and it was, uh, I think it had prices for the massage and the different types of massage. I could see that it was a genuine place you know because it's sort of head and shoulders massage and um, you know different parts and uh, you know sort of um, I think they might have done reflexology uh, cock and balls you know just general difference a proper therapist therapy stuff and I so I went in there knowing that it was genuine. I'm making a much bigger deal of this than I need to, but you know, I just it was a genuine place, but it was also a naturist place. That included the staff, which I didn't realise. Um, and that was not the reason I went in the first time. And I repeat that sentence. It was not the reason I went in there the first time. But subsequent times, um, I'll be waiting for a massage, and uh, I got to know a couple of the massages there because uh, it was really good for my back, it just really helped so much and I've always had issues with uh, stress and stuff so it really helped me a lot I'd love to be able to have a massage every every week or every you know twice a week or something a full body massage but it's too expensive I can't can't afford to do stuff like that but it'd just be wonderful and it should be on the NHS it should be available to everyone I think if every, everybody had a massage every t twice a week 
right from an early age I think we I think we'd have a, d a different kind of society perhaps so I got shown around when I first went there a lady came over and said would you like I'll show you around the 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 different places you know the, the the facilities I'm not sure if there was a gym there I think there was a gym there as well um, as well as a Tony and a Paul ba boom 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 uh, but she she took my hand and kind of led me into the the area where there was a sauna show but she was she didn't have anything on and I noticed that you know I tried not I tried not to notice and she said it was alright to wear shorts or a dressing gown but you can't wear clothes um, and then she we got into the jacuzzi the bubble bath thing and it was only me and her there And she was just asking me what I was looking for, and I said I just explained about my back and looking to just get a bit of uh, relaxation because relaxing isn't something that I was ever really very good at when I was a younger man. I wasn't the most relaxed. Uh, And yeah, I'd, I'd had a lot of issues with stress and anxiety and stuff. Anyway, so I went to the. I said, yeah, I was sitting in this jacuzzi with her. She said, oh, should we get out now? And I had to say to her that I can't. I said, well, can we. But I couldn't say I can't. Um, but because I was also sort of sitting on one of the pressure things where you know where the water blows in and that was having a well, was having an effect but I just it looked like I was farting it really did all the bubbles coming right up near me but it was very very awkward and I mean she was I think she was oblivious to well there's no reason why she would know but the effect that uh, I was having or she was having on me because I was a young man and uh, you know sometimes I could I could get turned on by a sand castle, you know, it didn't take much at times, you know, sometimes, you know, a certain configuration of clouds could make me feel horny, so, oh, it looks like boobies, so, you know, so that's, that's just the way it is, but, or the way it was, not now, I'm very much more of a mature man, Ish. But here's a weird one. I went into because I had to lock my clothes in a locker. I went into the locker room, got my clothes, got dressed, and was just about to leave the room and there was a lady standing there 
and she was naked, completely naked. Sounds like a fantasy, but it's true. It's a different, different lady as well. And she said to me, can you please take my clothes off? I need them. No, she didn't. She said, oh, hello. I said, oh, hello. You all right? She said, yeah, you. And I real felt a connection with her. Like I'd wanted to... I did kind of go over and talk to her. And so, well, I better go now, but... The weird thing about it, if she'd, if she'd have had clothes on, I possibly would have asked her if she wanted to go out for a drink or something. But because she was completely naked, I didn't feel very confident to do that. So I'm kind of pleased that we wear clothes. Not only for that reason, but just, you know, because they do keep us warm. Plus, they hide the bits you don't want to be seen. She was lovely, and I just kind of... Lovely personality, really like like talking to her. But I didn't... I couldn't ask her out. Because it was just such a weird situation. Anyway, the place ended up getting closed. And, well, clo I don't know why they closed. Maybe, I think the, the building, the people that owned the building wanted to turn it into a hotel or something like that. So I never actually, it was, I didn't know I was going to talk about my, my, my life as a nudist or a naturist. I never really classed myself as being a naturist, but I used to be, I used to go to a naturist club for probably about six, seven months. generally once a week just for the massage I didn't bother I might have gone into the sauna but I've been in saunas a couple of times and each time I've been in the sauna a man's voice starts talking to me and it's usually completely black. Can't, can't see a single thing in the sauna. The ones that I've been in. And I just don't know where. Uh, spatially I can't get my head around where I am and where they are. And Yeah, so I kind of. You know, leave very quickly. Well, that was quite a nice place, though. I did actually do a massage course myself. Let me just have a little drink. Two thousand and two, and after I'd sort of become ill, I started looking at maybe changing my lifestyle a bit, and I decided to do a massage course the following year, which I did. So it's a holistic therapy course. Started it in probably September 2003. And it was like reflexology, 
Indian head massage, full body massage, and something else as well, I forget, but also anatomy. Uh, it was part of the course. So I learnt some reflexology and I learnt the full body massage. Uh, as well as practicing on civilians as well. And I was pretty good at the massage. It's, it's quite easy, really. It's, 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 you know, it's not that complicated. It is hard work, though. I was very surprised at how much physical effort goes into massaging someone. And uh, so I left the course, but I'd learned a lot before I le before I left. I didn't learn the Indian head massage, and yeah, so that was the. And I think there was the other things that they might have covered that I didn't do, uh, like anatomy, some of the anatomy stuff. Um, so yeah, that was uh, something that I wasn't expecting to tell anybody about ever I forgot all about it the not the massage course but the naturist club that I used to go to because I'm not really a naturist I suppose we all are when we're kids because it's natural to run around and we're not we don't have the self consciousness of Adults or teenagers, I suppose. Uh, there's there's a point, isn't there? I think when we sort of suddenly realise, oh wait a minute, everyone can see me knob. You know, it's it kind of there's a point, and. Yeah, so I quite liked, I quite liked that place, but at the same time, I was a little bit, a little bit nervous about it. I was not really sure what they were. It's like, what are they really up to? What are they really up to? <laughs> but they weren't up to anything. It was just a bunch of people that were just relaxing, really just relaxing and it was relaxing they even had a television so for people that were just going there to have a drink I think they might have even made food I don't know that would be the kind of place I'd quite like to go to somewhere to go and have a drink and go and have something to eat and because you can't hide you can't really put on a yes I did notice that you can't really put on a, a fake personality when you're naked you kind of got no choice but to just be yourself when everything is on show Saturday today I'm 
recording this, it's one minute to five in the evening, and I know, or in the afternoon, I know that Andre, and he's listening, as soon as I say his name, his ears pop up, guaranteed, he's listening to me, in fact, the second I stand up, he will run out of his bag, I know. That's what he does. I can predict his behaviour sometimes. Because all he wants really is to go outside and roll around in the mud, the wet grass, and just do his thing. He loves being outside. Especially when it's nice. I mean, even though it's not sunny or particularly warm, it's still mild today. A little bit of a wind, but it's still mild. He loves a bit of breeze, does Andre.